Welcome, welcome to Wheat and Barley, where you receive the ingredients to get into know God better. I'm Maxine Williams, and today God has given a mighty word. I'm going to go ahead and jump right in, hallelujah. Uh, but first, we're going to pray over this word, and then I'm going to give you the meat that the Lord has given to uh, me to deliver to you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Go ahead and bow your heads and close your eyes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God, for this day. Thank you, Lord God, for your mightiness. Thank you, Lord God, for your goodness, grace, and mercy. Hallelujah. Thank you for your works, God. Thank you for who you are in the midst of everything, God. Thank you for who you are. You have given a mighty word today, Lord God, for your people. Hallelujah. So they can understand this idea of harvest better. Hallelujah. You said that this was a platform where people can get to know you better, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you for that, God, because it is going to serve those who want to get to know you, who have uh, uh, who have a heart to want to know you better, who seeking for uh, the miraculous, the supernatural, who want those things in their lives. Hallelujah. And this is a place where they can get those ingredients, God, where they can put them together, mix together. Hallelujah. Things, hallelujah, under the, the heavenly realm, God, that you have assigned only to them, God. Hallelujah. They shall not, hallelujah, put together anything on their own, but it will be with your doing, God with the Holy Ghost in the mist, hallelujah, because you are a good God and worthy to be praised all the days of our lives, God, hallelujah. So today, Lord God, I pray that this word penetrate the hearts, God, the way that you wanted it to penetrate in those ears that you have assigned to hear this word, God, that they hear this word, hallelujah, and that it changed their lives, that it changed their trajectory, that it changed their mindset, hallelujah, that it changed how they speak, that it changed how they move, that it changed their relationships, God, hallelujah, because you are a true God and worthy to be praised, and your word is true, hallelujah, which means that there is no false uh, accusations, there is no false witnesses, there is no falsifying information in this word. This is the true word of God, hallelujah, that you can stand on, and I'm just so grateful for this truth, God, hallelujah. I am grateful for it, Lord God, and I pray that those who are praying with me are touched, their homes are touched, God, hallelujah, that the harvest overflows in them, hallelujah, for what is in us comes out of us, God, that the harvest overflows in them, God, hallelujah, and that it touches their household, God, that it touches their vehicles, God, that it touches those uh, that they love, their children, God, hallelujah, their mom and dads, God, hallelujah, their aunts and uncles, nieces, nephews, cousins and friends, God, hallelujah, that it touch all of those, hallelujah, that they love God, for you are a good God and worthy to be praised, hallelujah, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray, amen, all right, guys, so we're going to go ahead and jump right in, for I want to share the word as God has given it, okay, the Holy Spirit was speaking this morning, hallelujah, but again, like I said, this word of harvest was given to me a few days ago, hallelujah, but the Holy Spirit also added to it this morning, and so it is a full word, it is a complete word, hallelujah, and I'm pretty sure, and I know it with all my heart, that you're going to find joy in this word, because as if you're like me, <laughs> you get excited about God, you get excited about the word, you get excited about hearing anything about the goodness of God because you know who he is and you know that he is good. And because he is mighty and he is great, hallelujah, you will abide, hallelujah. And that's all he wants. He wants people that he can use, people who will be obedient, hallelujah, people who will not just fall to the wayside, who will not just fall with the world and just go along with what the world is saying, but who will listen to him and be obedient and do what he says to do, hallelujah. So thank you so much again for tuning in, but we're gonna go ahead and get to this word so that it can bring fruit into your life, hallelujah. All right, thus says the Lord, this is harvest season. And I'm pretty sure you've been hearing messages, those of you who are saints, I believe this, hallelujah, with all my heart, that you have been hearing messages about the harvest. But let me tell you some things that the Lord was telling me about this harvest, hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I'm just so grateful for it, Lord God. God is judging in this land, hallelujah. So I'm pretty sure, again, that you've been hearing about this harvest, this beautiful harvest, this miraculous harvest, this supernatural harvest, hallelujah. But the Lord says that he is judging the land. Yes. Hallelujah. He said he's separating the tares from the wheat. 
That's what he's doing. He's separating the tares from the wheat. This is biblical. He's separating them right now. He says it's harvest season. It's separation season. Separation season. It's reap what you sow season. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 13, verses 38 through 42. Those verses read, the field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world and the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The son of man shall send forth his angels and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and them which do iniquity. And shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. This is the Lord telling us during this season of harvest, hallelujah, that there's a separation and he is judging the land. Do not be deceived by an end of the world only type of prophecy where there will be this um, mass um, play and you have all this time to continue to participate in abominations and iniquity and, and sin. And that will be the time that you'll be judged. Um, please understand you are being judged right now. Hallelujah. Please understand you're being judged right now. You are reaping what you're sowing. Look around your life. You are reaping what you are sowing. God is judging the land. It is actual. It is factual. It is here biblically. But he also spoke this word. Hallelujah. A few days ago about the harvest that I'm sharing with you now. And then I will share with you what he said today. Okay. Hallelujah. So a few days ago, getting back to the word, he said that it is harvest season, all right? He said that it's separation season. He said that it reap what you sow season. And this right here means if you sow good, hallelujah, you're going to reap well, yes. If you sow uh, iniquity, abominations and, and sin, Yes, you're going to reap it. It will return right to you. The fruits of your labor, what you have put into the ground will grow. Hallelujah. It will be harvested. Hallelujah. And return to you. Hallelujah. But also in that, understand that those who are doing the darkness, those who are doing the good, you are being separated. The harvest separates the wheat, the good. Hallelujah. The good of the land. Hallelujah. The good fruit of the land. Hallelujah. From those who are the tares. The tares go into the furnace. Those are the ones who are doing abomination. Those are the ones who are committing to sin against God. Those are the ones who are following the enemy, the darkness, the evil of this land. Those are the ones who are following the world and not the word of God. He is separating the wheat wheat from the tares. Mm. The Lord says, it's God. It's a God is God season, which means that he's going to show himself fully in a lot of people's lives. This is the time if you're not right bit with God, if you have not repented of your sins and followed the Lord with all your heart, all your mind and all your soul, this is the time to repent and draw near to him. If you draw near to him, he will draw near to you. This is the time. He is separating. He's separating the wheat from the tares. And it's going to be clear to you who's a wheat product, hallelujah, and who's a tear. And I'm going to tell you right now, Yes, the tares grew with the wheat. That's you being in the world, saints. 
But that doesn't mean that you're of this world because there will come a time when God will separate you and you will be of his kingdom and he will call you his own, hallelujah, because you have always been his own. You just was in the world. But we already know as saints, when we walk in the spirit of the Lord, we are not of this world. We can see all around us what's happening. The Lord, hallelujah, Holy Spirit will speak to us and tell us things that are happening all around us. But because the world can't see, there's a lot of people we can't share those things with, hallelujah. But because the Lord is separating the wheat from the tares, hallelujah, the wheat will be able to speak to the wheat, hallelujah. And we will have our own language, hallelujah. We will understand each other, hallelujah, because we've been through some similar things, hallelujah. And we will be able to call on the wheat, hallelujah, for prayer, hallelujah. We will be able to call on the wheat, hallelujah, when we want to just rejoice in the word, hallelujah. And we will all understand each other, hallelujah, because it's the word of God, hallelujah, which brings us joy which brings us joy, hallelujah, to the word of God. And people of the world don't understand the joy in God. They don't understand the happiness that we get from reading the word. They don't understand, hallelujah, how Jesus Christ's death means life for us. They don't understand that truly. They hear about it, but they don't understand it. But when you get to know God on a different level, hallelujah, you will start to understand that your life is not your own, that you're on assignment, hallelujah, that you have an agenda. But guess what? A lot of times you don't even know what's on the agenda because a lot of times when you wake up in the morning, the Lord will tell you what you're going to do, hallelujah. But we are so grateful for that agenda, hallelujah, that we don't have to think of it on our own, hallelujah. The Lord says it and the Lord, you do it and you are obedient in the Lord, hallelujah. And he says, take off with your life, hallelujah, because you have partnered with him. And now you are allowing him to lead you as the leader that he is, the shepherd of the sheep, hallelujah. So with this, I'm just telling you right now, hallelujah, that we're in a season of harvest, but it's not just for the miraculous and the greatness that God has given his saints, hallelujah. Praise God for that because we want the supernatural blessings, hallelujah. We want the supernatural favor, hallelujah. And he's delivering them, believe that. He's delivering them. He said it's coming mighty and it's coming fast. Hallelujah. Speedily. Hallelujah. He is He is going to bless you speedily. Hallelujah. Because he is not waiting around anymore. But even with that, hallelujah, those who are or are sowing the iniquity, sowing the sins, sowing the abominations, following the land, worshiping idols, going into darkness and doing dark things. He said, this is, the, hey, he's judging the land. This is harvest season, baby. He's judging the land. And guess what? You are being judged too. So pay attention to what you're doing in this land at this time because he is judging the land, hallelujah. And he said, it's a miracle season, hallelujah. He said that it's supernatural abundance season. He said it's financial wealth season. Believe it, saints, believe it. It is the season. He has the storehouse open. He is ready to bless you right now, supernaturally. Yes, checks coming in the mail and you didn't even know they were coming, hallelujah. I'm telling you, money showing up in your bank accounts, you didn't even uh, uh, know that was coming to you, hallelujah, because there's a release on his people, hallelujah, for financial wealth. There's a release of hallelujah, abundance, hallelujah. So go ahead and receive it, hallelujah. But I'm telling you now, if you doubt it, he will pass you by because God is a good God. But he doesn't have time for those who are lukewarm, those on the fence, those who don't want to believe fully and wholly. He doesn't have time for that. He needs his saints on board. He needs those warriors on board. He needs those who are saying, you know what? I don't have a shakable faith. I have a full and whole faith in the Lord and what he will do in this season in my life. Hallelujah. That's who God is looking for. Those are the people he, he wants to use for this land because there are a lot of people who need healing in this land. There are a lot of people who need the miraculous in this land. There are a lot of people who have not heard the word such as this. Hallelujah. But let me tell you something. God is a supernatural God. He will bring forth what you have desired. He said, hallelujah, if you follow him, hallelujah, he will do what is in your heart, which are your heart desires, hallelujah. He knows the intent of your heart, hallelujah. He knows the intent of your heart and he will do just that, hallelujah. Praise God for what he will do in our life, what he has already done. When you open your mouth to pray, guess what? He has already done. He knows you. Understand that he knows you. He already knows what you prayed for. It's just a matter of you pulling it down. Hallelujah. It's just a matter of you pulling it down. Hallelujah. And if you don't know how to pull it down, 
from the heavenly realm. If you've been praying for abundance and you don't know how to pull it down, just go into prayer. Hallelujah. Go into prayer and start worshiping God, thanking him for what you have right now. And then just go ahead and ask him. He said, those who ask shall receive. Go ahead and ask him for what you're seeking and then literally start pulling it down. Literally start pulling it down, speaking into it, pulling it down. I'm telling you, when you start moving, when you start acting, faith without actions, I'm telling you, doesn't work. But you have to act, hallelujah. Faith and works work, hallelujah. Faith and work works. Hallelujah. So you want to go ahead and work, work, work. This is an action. Guess what? If you do this right, you can get tired from this action. You can get tired from this work. Yes. Because in praise and worship, I'm telling you, it's not one of those uh, lukewarm things. It's something that you have to act out. It's something that you have to pull down. It's something that you have to cast out. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, when you have the faith in, in God, in Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you'll be able to do some mighty things if you just believe, because believe, believe is a power. It's a mighty power that the enemy cannot break, that the enemy wants to steer your mind away from, because if you don't believe and there's doubt, then he's able to enter. He's able to do some corruption. He's able to come in to kill, steal, and destroy. But when you have belief, nothing is able to come near you. You might see it. I'm telling you, you might see it, but it will not harm you. It will not bring that danger to you. You may even be involved in it, right? You may be even be involved in it somehow, but because of your belief level, God won't even let it harm you. There's a, there's a blessing in being able to see what the enemy is doing. I'm telling you, there's a blessing in being able to see what the enemy is doing because as you see it, you will also see that whomever that is behind the scene will reap what they sow. And whatever the enemy is trying to do, God will turn it around for your good because he is a good God, a righteous God. Hallelujah. Yes. The Lord also says, it's death season for some. I said it, death, D-E-A-T-H. It is death season for some. He also defined what harvest is. And he said that harvest is gathering a crop. So even if an evil person planted seeds of abomination um, sin, those seeds produce more abomination and more sin. That's their crop. That's their fruit of the land. And the Lord also said that they will have to consume every bit of that. He will leave no table unturned. Everything will have to be uh, uh, eaten because there's nothing wasted. There's nothing wasted in the kingdom. He has brought the harvest, you understand? So whatever is sown, you're going to reap the benefits of it. You're going to reap the fruits that you've sown and you will have to eat because what is in you comes out of you, right? So the seeds that you sow come out of you, which means that those seeds represent what is in you already. Those seeds represent what is in you already. So if you are a good person and you're calling yourself good and you work hard to be good, hallelujah, your fruit will look good and it will be of good things. And when you eat that good fruit, it will then go into you and you will consume it and it will be of you. And guess what? When you pour out good seed again, you will reap another good harvest. However, if you are doing those evil, dark things, you are sowing seeds that are coming out of your dark heart into the land. And those crops are growing all black. I see it. Black crops growing. Black crops growing. I see it. Black crops growing. Growing tall at that. It seems like a mighty dark harvest for you. But guess what? With that wickedness, you have to then 
because God is separating the tares from the wheat, baby. You have to then take your own crop in that broken basket, that withered basket. I see it, that broken basket with that dark black fruit. And you have to go back to your table with all of that darkness around you. And you have to consume that dark fruit. Hallelujah to God for being so good to us, his saints, protecting us and God in us. He's telling us this right now. Hallelujah. They have to go back to their table with that dark black fruit. I see the black corn. I see it. It's, it's black, like smut, like a fire has taken place and it's the residue after the fire all over it. But guess what? There's nothing sweet about it on the inside. This smut is all the way through. And they have to consume it, which means it becomes them again, a part of them again, because it was already them in the first place for the seed to come forth in that way because their decisions brought forth that dark fruit, hallelujah. But guess what? After they consumed it again, it's just going to produce more darkness. These are the people with the scales over their eyes that saw in this darkness. They don't have eyes to see, ears to hear. They, they know not what they do. They're just pawns in a scheme of the enemy. And I just pray for them right now, hallelujah. I just pray for them right now that their souls be saved so, so they can at least see the kingdom of God. Because if they don't, the Lord has already said, it's in the Bible, the Lord has already said, that he will not pity you. When he brings this judgment, he will not pity you. He see all of the abominations, the iniquity in the land. He will not pity you when he brings his wrath. This is judgment time. Stop playing around with God. Stop playing with him. God does exist. I heard it, Lord. Hallelujah, Holy Spirit. God does exist. Some of you are thinking that God doesn't exist. This is the great platform to be on. God does exist. Test him. If you don't think God exists, go buy a holy Bible. I have a King James Version. Go buy a holy Bible. Find a space in your house. Go read your Bible. Speak to God. Speak to Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Ask him, are you real? Read the Bible some more if you don't hear anything. Ask him again, are you real, Jesus Christ of Nazareth? You don't hear anything? Continue to read. Don't give up. We've been taught that. Never give up. I promise you with your persistence and just wanted to know who God is, he will show up. And I always say he will show out. You will be stunned that he is real. He is listening. He is watching. And he is doing. And because you couldn't see him, that only meant that you were seeing the world. And that's what you were caught up in because you can only see what you believe. And your belief system is in the world. And that's why your eyes are closed to God. But when you start seeing God, you will start seeing the world differently. And your eyes will start to close to the world because all you can do now is focus on God and what God is telling you to do. You're, all your time, I'm telling you, you may not even have time for friends after this. If you're a lonely person, this is a great place for you. If you're lonely, you don't have friends and you're just trying to figure out where you are, this is a perfect place for you because God will fill you up. So you'll be trying to figure out where, where do you have the time to have friends because you've been spending so much time with God and God has assigned you to do things you don't even have room for to be honest with you, but you're trying to get them all done, you will find that you don't even have room for friends. And you probably didn't need them anyway because they, were, they weren't those friends who were praying for you anyway. They weren't those friends who, when you were down, they were really looking out for you, trying to make sure that you're good, hallelujah. God will take people out of your lives. Those who talk behind your back, God will take people out of your lives and just, just kind of like 
put them to the side. And they may be believers. They may be following God too, but they're not on your level and they're not called to do what you're called to do because God is trying to place you with another group of people who's going to go to a whole nother level. Do you understand what I'm saying? So sometimes you even have to leave some Christians behind. Sorry, saints. <laughs> That's just the truth. Sometimes you have to leave some Christians behind, some saints behind, because where God is taking you, he's not taking them. It doesn't mean that you can't still affiliate. Hallelujah. If God leaves that window open, you can still affiliate. But it, it just means that you won't be following them um, on their platform because God has called you to a different platform. Hallelujah. We're all serving God. So praise God. And yes, support uh, your friends and support those saints in the kingdom. Hallelujah. We're all uh, performing works of God. We all have an agenda assigned from him. Hallelujah. But we just may be doing it in different regions. We may be doing it um, um, uh, with a different um, target or a different uh, task because that's how God designed things. He don't design everybody to do the same exact thing. Some of us are called to do other things. And so we just have to focus on those things that he has called us to do and be obedient in that. And he will add on, hallelujah, because there's always territories. When he gives you an assignment, that means he's about to prepare you for a territory. Listen to what I'm saying to you. When he gives you an assignment, it means that he's about to prepare you for a territory, a territory beyond all imagination. You're getting ready to do some great things, hallelujah. But he got he to gotta be able to trust you with the small things, to be, to be able to see if you can handle the small thing, if you can handle this stress that's coming your way and you don't even have the big thing yet. Do you understand? Because if you can handle this stress and what's coming your way, then he knows that he you can handle that big thing that he has prepared for you, that larger territory that he has prepared for you. Hallelujah. You can handle it. Hallelujah. Because you are mighty. Hallelujah. In that small thing, you are faithful in that small thing. You are obedient in that small thing. Even when you were going through, even when you didn't have, even when you felt unloved, even when you felt unappreciated, he still knew and saw you, hallelujah. And he knows, hallelujah, what's in you. And it is a mighty warrior, hallelujah. I see it, Lord God. It's a mighty warrior, hallelujah. You have the lion of Judah inside of you, hallelujah. You have the fire breathing lion of Judah inside of you, hallelujah. You have the fire of the Holy Spirit inside of you, hallelujah. And it is mighty and it is roaring, hallelujah. And what he is saying to you, you may not have all the things that, that you desire, hallelujah. But he said, do not look at what you have, hallelujah. Do not look at what you have. Do not look at what's around you, hallelujah, and think that's your reality. Go ahead and cast it down cast it down while you're casting down other things go ahead and cast down that reality that you're in hallelujah go ahead and cast it down hallelujah because god said it's harvest season hallelujah and your harvest and your come up is in this season hallelujah so even though you may not know where your harvest is coming from hallelujah you may not know what it looks like hallelujah but he said cast it down in this season your reality all around you and he's going to bring forth a mighty harvest that's going to take you from this place hallelujah to the next place hallelujah that he has assigned, that he has designed, hallelujah. He already know where he wants you to live, hallelujah. He already designed it, hallelujah. You're gonna be able to spruce it up with some accents, hallelujah. But he already know that place where he's taking you, where you're going to live. He already see it, hallelujah. He's gonna place that vision on you as well, hallelujah. But he said, cast down your reality, hallelujah. Cast down that brokenness, hallelujah. Cast down that debt, hallelujah. Cast down, hallelujah, that broken car, hallelujah, that's sitting in your yard, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Cast it down. Hallelujah. Cast down everything that's broken around you. Hallelujah. Cast down that broken stove. Hallelujah. Cast down that broken refrigerator. Hallelujah. Cast down the, 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 the tub. I see a tub. The water isn't working in the tub. Hallelujah. Cast it down. The Lord said, hallelujah. Your belief is going to bring you out. Your obedience is going to bring you out. Your faith is going to bring you out. God said, hallelujah. He's going to bring you out of this. I, just believe me when I'm telling you, hallelujah. I see it. Hallelujah. The Lord is doing some mighty things in your life. Hallelujah. You just have to come forth and believe with all your heart, mind, and soul that he's going to do it. And he is. He said, it's already done. You just haven't pulled it down. You haven't gone into prayer and worship and really pulled it down so that you can see the steps that he's placing in front of you, that road that he's just building in front of you, he's putting it down step by step, hallelujah. That's why you can't see the road because he hasn't even put the road fully in front of you. He's giving it to you in pieces. You step forward, 
he give you another piece of that road. You step forth again, he give you another piece of that road. Hallelujah. He's bringing you out of that place because you are a saint and he favors you and he loves you and you are his beloved. He is bringing you out. Trust and believe. Go forth, be obedient, be faithful. Hallelujah. Trust in what the Lord is telling you. Hallelujah. And move. Mm. God is a great God. He's an almighty God. His presence fills the room. And some of you are aware of his presence while others can't see him or feel him. Hallelujah. You can't even hear him in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for that. To add on to the word that the Lord has had given me days before, and that was it in its entirety. Thank you, Lord, for that word. We're going to move on into the word that he gave today. And the Lord said, understand the harvest is more than reaping and sowing. Hallelujah. So he's adding on to it now. You understand? It is a time where God separates his wheat from his tares. And he said in Ezekiel 9 verses 3 and 4. So we're going to go ahead to Ezekiel chapter 9. Okay, just gonna go right here. Pages are sticking together. Okay, so Ezekiel chapter nine, verse three says, and the glory of God of Israel was gone up from the cherub, whereupon he was to the threshold of the house. And he called to the man clothed with linen, which had the writer's inkhorn by his side. And four says, and the Lord said unto him, go through the midst of the city, through the midst of the Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all abominations that be done in the midst thereof. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The Lord, during this separation of the wheat from the tear, has given us a word that shows how he knows his wheat. He knows his wheat because he's already sent forth. He's already sent forth those holy ones or that holy one who has marked the heads of those who are crying out regarding the abominations of the city, whose hearts are broken because of all of the iniquity around them, who are disturbed by the evil, witnessing it in their land and just crying out to God, like, please, 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 Lord God, help us in this land. For these people know not what they do. Help us in this land, save us, God. He hath sent one who has been assigned to mark the heads of those who are crying out. Those are his weak. Follow me. Hallelujah. God assigns the man dressed in linen with an ink horn by his side to go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all abominations that be done. The weak has been marked. Understand what I'm saying? If you're wanting to receive a mark of the Lord so that you will be a part of his week, repent now. These are the times. You don't have any time to be wasting. To, uh, you know, you're going to wait till you're 50 years old to, or 60 or 70 or 80 to, to give yourself to the Lord. Stop playing around with God. It is not the time to be playing around with God. He has sent forth. And his saints are being marked, which means that you're easily identified, evil one, because now you are a tear. Obviously, you don't have the mark of the Lord. 
Plenty of people talk about the mark of the beast. Forget the mark of the beast. I want to be marked by God and used by God in a part of his agenda, his will. Hallelujah. I want to be marked by God and used by God. Use me, Holy Spirit, the way that you see fit. Hallelujah. The weak cry out for those to be saved who are doing evil for God is the one true living God. God is a good God who loves you. He loves you so much. And God says he wants to partner with you in this life, not the next life. Stop waiting until you're, you're older to be saved. God said he wants to partner, you, partner with you in this life so that you may have a harvest beyond what you could ever imagine. He want to give good things to you. He wants you to live a good life. Hallelujah. God is not living in a shack in heaven. Understand what I'm saying? God is not uh, somewhere trying to figure out how he's going to pay his next bill. God is rich, super rich. Understand? He can supply richness to this entire earth. Hallelujah. He has given us so much just by giving us this land to live on. Hallelujah understand what I'm saying he wants to give you good things too but because you don't believe that you deserve good things because you don't believe that good things can come to you because you believe what the world is saying to you about your illness because you believe what the world is saying to you about the way that you think or your or that you may have mental illness the, stop believing what the world is saying to you these people are reading textbooks hallelujah read your bible these people are going around studying for exams to take. Hallelujah. How about uh, uh, moving into the test of God? How, how about being obedient to God so that he can show you the riches of his kingdom how, and riches and glory of his kingdom? Hallelujah. How about following along with the Bible and the works of the Bible and studying the Bible and those examples? L looking at his, um, um, following his uh, statutes and commandments, hallelujah, rather than that of the world. Stop following the mandates of the world, but follow follow the commandments and statutes of the Lord. Hallelujah. Also, the Lord uh, revealed in Ezekiel chapter nine, verse 11. And behold, the man cloth with linen, which had the ink horn by his side, reported the matter saying, I have done as thou hast commanded me. Mm. So not only is he showing you that those who follow him are marked and so he is definitely separating the um wheat from the tares he's also showing you that he has even in the heavenly realm those who are obedient to him still you struggling with obedience you're struggling with obedience. In the heavenly realm, he had those who are obedient to him still. They do what he say do. They know how good he is. You don't know because you haven't stepped into what you need to step into. But for those saints who know, they already know how good God is and they're ready to go deeper and greater, hallelujah. And the Lord says he has deeper and greater for you, hallelujah. He has beyond the traditional church of what you thought church would be, hallelujah. If you just believe a little more, hallelujah, he will show you the kingdom of heaven. If you just believe a little more, hallelujah, he will give you visitations. If you just believe a little more, hallelujah, just be a, a fanatic with God, hallelujah. Be a fanatic in your belief, hallelujah. Be a fanatic fanatic with your faith. Hallelujah. Take authority. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. With the territories that you have, take authority of them. Hallelujah. Be fanatic with the Lord. Hallelujah. And you will see the goodness of his, his grace. Hallelujah. You will see the goodness of his mercy. Hallelujah. You'll see the goodness of his righteous right hand that will bless you abundantly. You will see it if you just believe beyond your belief right now. And yes, you can go deeper and greater in God. You can go deeper and greater in God. There is no limitation. There is no ceiling on God. There is no ceiling on God. Some people in the Bible, when they died, they actually went straight to heaven. <laughs> There was no burial. There was no funeral or anything like that. Nobody left behind. They just went straight to heaven. Their obedience level took them straight to heaven. God just took them. Hallelujah for that. There is a window, hallelujah, that you can step into, hallelujah, that will take you on this growth spurt with the Lord. I see the window. The Lord says, if you just, just step, lift it up, just step over in. It's not a door. It's a window. You have to lift that window up and you have to kind of like maneuver yourself through that window. 
And when you step on the other side of that window, he said that there's opportunity for you to, to extend yourself. You can extend yourself in a way in the Lord that is beyond your imagination. If only you're willing to step into it. The Lord says with this verse, the man clothed with cloth with linen, which had the inkhorn by his side, reported the matter, saying, I have done as, as thine has commanded me. As thou has commanded me. Let me say that again. I have done as thou has commanded me. Hallelujah for that. Hallelujah for him completing his assignment and being obedient. Hallelujah. Well, this is the mighty word of the Lord. I pray that it blessed you. I pray that the Lord has given you uh, what you need in order to take on this next week. We will be back next week um, with another message. Again, this is harvest. Hallelujah. The separation of the wheat and the tares. And God is doing a mighty thing in this land. So please believe it. Lord God, hallelujah. We're just going to go ahead and pray and seal this, God. This is the word of God. This is your holiness, God. This is your kingdom, God. This is your platform. Use it as you see fit. Touch those hearts and minds and souls that needed to be touched, Lord God. Hallelujah. And let them take this as a sore, God. And let them go ahead and command their weak. Go ahead and bring forth the harvest, God, in their lives. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Blessings to every single one of you. If you haven't done so, like the channel. Hallelujah. Well, like this episode. <laughs> Subscribe to the channel. Hallelujah. And in faith, be blessed. Till next time. Bye. Hit the thumbs up. Hit the like button.